Hello and welcome to KerbalCraft. My name is Ryan Rosenberg and today we're doing another Kerbal Space Program video in which we're going to Moho, one of the hardest planets to reach in KSP. And in this video we'll be landing a base on it, but not just any base, a mobile base. So like, it has wheels and allows itself to move across the surface. Though, come to think of it, that makes it more of a crude Land Rover, but anyways, let's get into the video. Right now, I'm launching the first of two parts to low curve in orbit, which contains the transfer slash capture stage, which will allow us to move from LKO to a stable orbit around Moho. Right now, I'm just circularizing the orbit to about 75 kilometers. This transfer stage features 10 of the Nerve Atomic rocket engines, 8 of which are asparagus stage, and when attached to the base, this stage gives us the necessary almost 8,000 meters per second of delta V required to transfer to and capture at Moho. Now I'm launching the second part, which features the actual base and the 12 crew members that will live slash work on it. This base will do an orbital rendezvous with the first part that we just put into orbit. Once it gets there, it'll be able to dock with it and we'll be able to head off to Moho. Once I get out of the atmosphere, I can then circularize the orbit, which also matches our velocity with the targeted vessels. And when that is done, I can then abandon the launch stage and move in closer to the target using the RCS thrusters I included on the base. As the distance between the base and I got smaller, so did the amount of RCS monopropellant I had. To prevent from running out of monopropellant, I decided to switch to the other vessel which has the atomic engines, and used those engines to adjust my approach to the target. Though, once I got close enough to dock, the monopropellant started to run out. However, after a few attempts of using the stage with the nerve engines, I managed to successfully dock the stage, and now we're ready to go to Moho. To do that, I am using McJeb to plan a maneuver node using the lowest amount of fuel possible. After the 150 day long time warp, which is further sped up thanks to the better time warp mod, we're ready to burn for Moho. This burn required us to do three passes at Kerbin because of the abysmal thrust to weight ratio that the nuclear engines produce. Right now you can see that I am performing the first burn. Once that is complete, we can start the second burn. And after the two minute long burn, we can begin the final and the longest of the three burns. Now as you can see here, the craft got a little wobbly because of the physics time warp, but that doesn't really matter. And remember how earlier I said that the craft uses asparagus staging? Well here's the part where we ditched the first of four parts of auxiliary boosters. Now I would like to point out that we got very lucky with this transfer burn requiring only 1500 meters per second of delta V. Often a MOHO transfer can require upwards of 3000 meters per second of delta V. The reason for these inconsistencies is because of MOHO's inclined and eccentric orbit around the sun, which can alter the transfer's efficiency depending on where MOHO is in its orbit. Even with the transfer burn complete, we still haven't even started the most difficult part of getting to MOHO. Now I'm just correcting my closest approach, and once we get there, I further lower the periapsis, making sure to get it to about 40 kilometers. And now this is where we begin the ludicrous 3,500 meter per second capture burn to slow down our relative velocity with MOHO in order to achieve a stable orbit. For those unaware, this is the part that makes getting to MOHO so difficult. With a TWR of less than 0.6 near the surface, this burn took an entire 30 minutes to complete. While you watch this thing make its colossal capture burn, now is probably a nice time for me to talk about some MOHO trivia. I'm pulling this directly from the KSP wiki, and it says, MOHO is the third smallest planet and the closest to Kerbal. With an orbital period of 102 days, the shortest in the Kerbal system, and an orbital velocity ranging from 12 to 18 kilometers per second, is also the fastest celestial body in Kerbal Space Program. I am going to note that this is the reason why it's so difficult to capture with the planet. Continuing, it is the Mercury analog. MOHO lacks an atmosphere and natural satellites. 
this planet gets its name from the Moho Rovic discontinuity, the boundary between Earth's crust and mantle. Moho's inclined, low, and eccentric orbit, lack of atmosphere or moons for aero braking and gravity assists, respectively, make encountering the planet relatively difficult. Without an atmosphere to retain or block heat, Moho's daytime surface temperatures can exceed 300 degrees centigrade, making radi radiators an absolute necess necessity if any part, such as drills or engines, must be cooled to operate both safe safely and efficiently. Moho rotates very slowly, its solar day being over a hundred times longer than that of Kerbin's, which means that reconnaissance satellites will likely have to wait a long time between targets. But it also means that there may be several opportunities to perform individual measurements across multiple orbits. Although Moho's close proximity to the sun increases solar panel output to 10.4 times that at Kerbin's periapse, excessive heat can cause cooling issues for mining operations, and the extremely long nights will necessitate bringing an alternative power source such as RGGs or fuel cells for extended surface operations. Alright, now that we're done with that burn, we've finally made it into low orbit. How about that? Now it's time to disconnect the base from the transfer stage and get ready to land this thing. You may have noticed that I have left a lot of fuel in the transfer stage, and that's because I planned for the worst of having a 3000 meter per second transfer and a 4 km per second plus capture burn. Since that stage has a docking port, it can possibly be used later for any type of future MOHO mission. Now, landing on MOHO is very similar to landing on the MUN. However, the amount of fuel required to land on MOHO is a bit more than that of the MUN. To put it in perspective, MOHO's surface gravity is about 170% that of the MUN's and almost one third of Kerbin's gravity. And now, if you look on the screen, we're coming in close to the surface. I'm about to finally put this thing on the planet. And we did it! We landed on MOHO, MOFOs! Now, I have a confession to make. I've been playing KSP for five years, and this is my first time ever landing on MOHO. And if I remember correctly, this base mission is my first ever set of attempts to even land on MOHO. Now, you'll notice I said set of attempts, and that's because when trying to do this mission, I actually failed trying to get to slash land on MOHO exactly four times because of insufficient craft design, quality, etc. Before doing the run, that you're seeing on the screen right now. Now, I don't know about you, but I think landing in one piece on Moho after just the fourth attempt is pretty decent. Right now, I'm just getting out the Kerbals to show off this catwalk that I put on here and inspect slash repair the wheels from any damage that might have occurred on the landing. Once I finished that, I started driving around just for a little bit and then I found one of the new Breaking Ground DLC terrain features, which was a Moho Stone. I decided this would be a good place to plant a flag, so I decided to EVA all 12 of the Kerbals I brought with on this mission. I figured it would make a nice thumbnail once I got all of them out and lined up, which took me about 40 minutes because I got really picky about the way I wanted them lined up. Once I had the flag planted and the necessary screenshots captured, I boarded all of the crew members back onto the ship and then decided to drive around a little bit. Now if you have any experience with rovers, ground bases, or pretty much anything with wheels on it in KSP, things like to tip over and spin out of control if you're not being careful. Just check out what happened here. Enough of that nonsense. The rover actually drives pretty well, better than most other rovers I've built or seen. You just have to be fairly conservative with the steering and also make sure that you don't go running down a hill at full speed. So for those of you wondering, this rover can seat up to 25 Kerbals and is powered by 16 RGDs. I decided to go for a design with no solar panels. It features 32 wheels for optimal performance and durability, and it also has a bunch of science gear. The atmospheric spectrometers are completely useless on MOHO, but I just added those to make the craft look more advanced. Same with the extra comms dishes. You only need one, but again, it makes it look more interesting. 
I also have a docking port on it, which will allow us to add any sort of expansions or connect to a larger ground station in the future if necessary. I also decided to clip three of the newer rover cockpits together, which are variants of the Mark II lander can. So I think I'll close by showing the base checking out a Moho Ridge, one of the new surface features with the surface feature robotic arm. The .craft file will be in the description so you can check out this base for yourself. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video or a dislike if you didn't care too much for it. Remember to subscribe to see more content like this and thanks for watching KerbalCraft. I'll see you in another video.